Good morning. Welcome back to Mark's Kitchen. I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. And in this video, we're going to chat about fermenting Jerusalem artichokes. Now it's about five in the morning, so I've got to keep the noise down. Everyone's asleep. We've got football on in a couple of hours and I've got to go and prepare for that. It's a home game. We've got to set the oval up and everything. So I've got to get there early before others. But I wanted to pump out a video in the vlog slash radio interview style. I did a radio show um, about a week ago and we talked about just briefly how to ferment Jerusalem artichokes. So I'm going to show you that and I'll give you a bit of footage along the way. You'll see I've got some oranges there on the bench. I'm going to squeeze them for breakfast. Uh, the wife's back, so I'm going to make some nice orange juice. But what we'll do is we'll have a quick taste test of this Jerusalem artichoke and see if it's actually ready. It's been fermenting for about three weeks and I think it's pretty good. Just get rid of that bourbon that's there. I'm partial to a bit of turkey occasionally. That's what it looks like. Fermenting away. Alrighty, we uh, we missed him last week or last fortnight, Mr. Uh, Valencia, not with us due to family reasons, I think, but he is now in the studio, in position, ready to make a move with a bag of goodies. G'day, I'm Mark Valencia from selfsufficientme.com. I spent 21 years in the army and now I'm living the dream by being as self-sufficient as possible. And welcome to another episode of If I Can Do It, You Can Do It. Looking good, mate. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thanks, Rob. Self? Yeah, very good. Very good. Not too bad at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about that soon. But uh, for your special topic this morning, what have you brought in? What's your goodie of choice? This is Jerusalem artichoke. Wow. Now, not to be confused with the globe artichokes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the, this is what, this is a root vegetable. Yeah. So it's not that uh, bud from the globe artichoke, which is more like a thistle, um, or that you eat the flower before it opens up. Uh -huh. This is what grows underneath, and it's not related to the globe artichoke at all. It's actually related to the sunflower. So it's a species of sunflower. It looks like ginger. Just from it the, does. From the it looks like ginger. Here, have a feel of it. Thanks, it looks like ginger or turmeric, mm. and uh, it has a consistency of uh, potato, raw potato but when cooked up it goes sort of clearer like a like a one of those um white sweet potatoes mm -hmm. is is how it's sort of the consistency of it mm -hmm. you can mash it up it's uh very high in fiber and it's why it gets the name farty chokes <laughs> because it gives some people a quite a bit of flatulence is that right yes that's very good. How, how does it how does it look sort of from a plant point of view? What, is, what is it good to grow here? It's a magnificent plant, and it's really good for the subtropics. Yeah. It gets to about six foot high, like a a, a sunflower. Yeah. Gets very bushy and has a a smaller flower than a sunflower. It looks like a big yellow daisy. Right. And it's stunning in the garden. Grows all summer. Then it dies back now in winter. And that's when it dies back. That's when you can dig the tubers up and eat them. Right. Okay. Yeah. And the thing is, the flatulence thing is, <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. I, very important. Go on. Yes. I'm, I'm afraid uh, people are put right off because of that. It's that bad. It can be really. Uh, he's he's yeah. looking at me like he knows exactly what he's it, talking it about. It can be. And, uh, yeah. and, and there's a few reasons for that. And, and because of the high dietary fiber in there, it's one of the highest of, of all foods, right. which is really actually good for us. But over time, especially us in the West, We've, we've sort of gone away from eating, we, we don't eat enough fibre and, and our gut has grown away from that. So like native um, tribes and that type of thing in Africa have a lot more 
uh, gut bacteria than we do. And the reason for that is because they eat a lot of that fiber stuff and it's good for them right. and they're healthier yeah. in, in effect gut wise than we are. Mm -hmm. And when we then start eating something like this, it takes a while for our gut bacteria to build up again mm -hmm. to be able to combat it. But if you stick with it, you can, you can get on top of it and a few trips to the, to the toilet and uh, after a few weeks you're fine. Now, I don't want to, I don't want no, to no, turn good. people it's, off this. It's, it's a medical uh, aspect of this very important yeah. topic. What, 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 what do you do with it? I mean, this is, uh, this is ready to go like this? This is uh, they really look pretty dirty? And it really, well, yeah, clean it up. The ground, yeah. Clean it up, you can peel it and then you can slice it up. Uh, you don't have to peel it. In this case, in here I've got a jar of fermented um, um, yeah. Artichoke. fermented artichoke yep. but uh, I've cut up in pieces and, and lacto fermented it lacto? yeah lacto yeah. fermented it um, we just leave it sit on the bench for about three weeks in the, in the water in, in the in the you know, saline water yep. so salt in a brine, brine. Yep. and I use one tablespoon of sea salt per one uh, cup of water mm -hmm. and then over about three weeks those that converts into something similar to like what sauerkraut or other fermented vegetables go and it really the, the salt gets consumed by the bacteria and it gets all eaten up and it goes all cloudy like this and might look a little off-putting but it tastes fantastic really? and the reason i got put onto it was because i actually gave it a bit of a poor review on my website i gave it three stars out of five i well, thought you tasted someone else's when we're, when no, you, no. You did it yourself, and you weren't happy with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I've been doing it in stir fries, and I, mean, and I was, I was saying, well, you know, it's a great vegetable, and it's got inulin in it, which, which is, which is not to be confused with insulin, yeah. uh, which is a hormone, yeah. so, you know, get rid of blood sugar. But um, inulin is is a is a sugar that is not metabolized by the body by the body, which means it's good for diabetics, good for diabetes, good for people who don't want a lot of sugar in their diet, like. And so it's a good substitute for potatoes in that particular way, mm. right? You know, inulin. inulin. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Um, and it's got a whole lot of good other vitamins and antioxidants in it. So, but anyway, mm. it's the taste thing and it's the flatulence. And a lady on on Facebook said, "Mark, don't give it up." She read my review and she yeah. said, "Don't write it off. Why don't you try lact um, lacto fermenting it?" So I whacked a whole bunch in a fermenting bottle, put it on the kitchen bench for three weeks. Had a t I've been eating it with the kids. Yeah. We love it. it Changes the world. It's like pickles. So how were you fermenting it before? You weren't. I wasn't fermenting it. No, so just I just it fresh. yeah, just having it fresh. And the, and the, one of the downturns is when you do dig it up, it's it goes um, it goes all soft after a few days. Yeah. Unless you put it in a really dark place or in the back of the crisper or whatever. After about five days, it goes quite soft and it's not as crunchy or nice. And you can eat it raw. You don't have to cook it. Yeah. And it's not as nice and crunchy. It's uh, another name for it is the earth apple. Ooh. Yeah. But you should have a taste of this okay. right. fermented stuff. So how do you have it? What do you have it with? Um, you put you can you can put it in salads. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can put it's... it in stir fries like a chestnut. But it's a bit small, isn't it? So you, you, would you do a whole? Would you make a, a sort of make it as a whole vegetable side just to have the? Yeah, you can cook it up. Uh, you can it roast it up and have it like a potato. Oh yeah. You okay. can you from can a grate fermented it. state. State. You would roast it from, from a. Oh well, you could from a fermented state. Oh, wow. So it's got that cocktail oniony kind of yeah. zestiness, but it's very fresh though. It doesn't have the sourness and the bitterness of that. Yeah, and that is just from mm. water and salt and its own um, uh, bacteria fermenting for about three weeks on the kitchen bench. Covered, lid on, not lid covered. on, uh, no oxygen, with a little ferm with a uh, one of those um, anti. I can't think of the word I now. I know what you're talking about. What, something that monitors the fermenting? No, it doesn't monitor the ferment, fermenting. It just stops um, an airlock, sorry. Oh, like and the one you use to brew the, brew the beer? Correct. And so the air can come out, can't come in? Carbon dioxide goes out. Right. Oxygen can't get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's what, that's what that good bacteria that creates these beautiful pickles out of nothing, really. Yeah. That's how they work. If you leave air get to it, well, then it'll go off and go all mouldy and... On that, uh, we should, we're about to run out of time, but mm. I, I got, uh, I squeezed a whole bunch of lemon juice the other day, just with a little bit of sugar, as lemon cordial. Yeah. But it started to ferment now. Mm -hmm. It started to go sour and bitter and, like, smell and the, the, the pop, the top, and it sort of, all yeah. this gas is escaping. Yeah. Without boiling it and sort of yep. preserving it properly, is there any way around that? Yeah, I've just knocked up a couple of nights ago lime 
lime juice, nine litres of it I made. Wow. Uh, and I did the same as you. I did it cold, cast the sugar. Yeah. And what you can do is put it in a bar fridge or something like that, and that'll slow down. So refrigerate it? Yeah, refrigerate it. That's it? Yeah, that'll stop that, that from happening. Or it'll slow it right down anyway and preserve it much, much longer. I'll do that yeah. next time. I mean, that's the way around it. Otherwise, yes, you have to boil it up, yeah. simmer it for five minutes, yeah. and then yeah. it peels everything off, and you've got sort of no goodness. you just got a taste. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, whack it in the fridge. That was very good, Mark. So, uh, yeah. so you Jerusalem artichoke, get them up, get them organised. Yeah. Put them into a jar, salt, water, leave it for three weeks. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. Fantastic. Best way to have Jerusalem artichoke, and it's one of the most healthiest foods you could have. Great substitute for potatoes. Just watch the... Uh, Oh. Yes. <laughs> it, what's that? It is in small quantities. Small amounts. Evacuate the studios. If I can do it, you can do it. Mark Valencia, selfsufficientme.com. Lots of interesting info there, and we'll uh, be uh, returning to another instalment in the uh, the next couple of weeks. All I've done is clean these root pieces up and cut them into about inch size pieces. Left them in there for three weeks or so in their own juice, so to speak, fermenting. Really crunchy. Tastes like a pickle. Beautiful. All the way through. It's like a dill pickle. Except it obviously has that Jerusalem artichoke flavour, which is quite earthy and different to anything else. The kids and I have been eating this it's quite nice. But I think it needs about another week to go even more sour because I like a nice sour pickle. That is beautiful and a really nice way to eat Jerusalem Island Shake. It's definitely my favourite way to do it and the uh, most effective way. Because at the end of the day, if you just pull the juice and artichoke out of the ground, clean them off, store them in the crisper or something, they won't last very long. A matter of days and they go soft. But if you ferment them like this, they stay hard and crunchy for eight, forever till you eat them. That's the way to do it. Grate them, put them in a salad, eat them like a pickle. Couldn't be much better. If you've got any questions about Jerusalem artichokes and fermenting them, you know, ask questions below. Get on our website, selfsufficientme.com. Um, check out our preserving recipes on our forum and the website, selfsufficientculture.com. Um, yeah, check out our Facebook page. Do all that stuff. Don't forget to like it and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.